try, but I don't do too well with it. So this video is gonna be like more chit chat. If you hear that little click, click, click noises, it's my lens, sorry about that. And if you hear any background noises, my little brother's playing a video game, what else? Oh, uh, my background is white. I have a uh, white backdrop thingy up because um, I'm home and when I film at home, you guys are used to that large brown dresser and I just don't like how it looks. This backdrop is very boring, but I'd rather a plain white sheet than what we normally have. So without further ado, let's start my makeup. Okay, so first I'm going to put on my face using my Rimmel London primer like I normally do. Um, if you guys have a new primer, or any other type of primer besides this one that you really, really love and you, you know stand by it let me know in the comments down below because i'm looking to try out a new primer preferably one of more like a gel consistency as opposed to this like thick lotion like cream so i kind of want to like just talk to you guys too about just random stuff okay so if you ever have that like crazy best friend or aunt that you talk to and they're just like all over the place that's really what this video is gonna be about so forgive me I'm super dehydrated so I just want to hydrate my lips a little bit before I go and put on lipstick I hate when I see girls with crusty dry lips put on lipstick and it's just like falling right in the little crevices of their lip oh my god I hate it it just oh my god I can't I'm sorry I'm just Okay, so I had to do my brows off camera because talking and doing brows at the same time is pretty difficult. And now I'm going to move on to doing my eyes. Um, for this look, I really wanted to go for a cranberry gold. I'm going to use my little Coastal Set Z palette. And I want to start with this red color. So um, the first thing I wanted to talk about um, was schooling. Um, as you guys know, I'm in college. I think I've said this like three times. And that's why I've really been finding it difficult to film and things like that because I'm not, I don't put YouTube before school, like school comes first for me. So I'm really, really, really close to finishing. And I don't want anything to jeopardize me being able to finish when I'm supposed to. So I've really been like slacking on the videos. And I do sincerely apologize for that. I'm gonna go in using like a more uh, defined blending brush. I don't know if you can see that. I'm gonna go in with my Too Faced Chocolate Bar and I wanna use this um, burgundy-ish color. And this is called Cherry Cordial, Cordial. I feel like I've struggled to say that before. I don't know how to say that, but that color. I'm just gonna be blending that in my crease. So another thing I wanted to talk about and I try to keep my like personal, you know, uh, political views and things like that, religious views, all that, um, off of my channel because you guys are here for, at least for right now, makeup. You know, like you're not really here to get a whole lesson on, you know, what I believe in my views and all that. But I just felt like since I do have a platform to reach people even if it's not a ton I'd rather talk about this and have 10 people hear it than none i've been hearing a ton of people talking about you know oh black black lives matter all lives matter um pray for uh you know paris no pray for the world now i'm not saying that those people were saying that you know pray for the world and you know uh all lives matter are wrong but my issue with them is that they come at it in a very like attacking manner as if those who are saying Black Lives Matter are saying that they are the only lives that matter. And that is really not where, at least the people that I know who represent that and myself, that is not where I'm coming from at all. Like at all. The whole thing is that it just seems that <clears throat> right now these group of people Seem to not be cared about so we're just trying to remind you hey just so you know these group of people matter like they matter don't forget about them that's what we're saying we're not saying that we're the only ones that matter 
it's almost at the exact opposite. We feel like we're the only ones that don't matter. And we're just sort of like, hey, hello, guess what? You know, my little brown behind, yeah, it kind of matter. So that's really where it's coming from. And, you know, focusing on Paris, that I won't get into because I'm not a political science major and I don't want to be. But just, it's not that nobody else is important. It's definitely like that, not that. I know there's some political reasonings behind it. You know how like Paris is one of our biggest allies, France is one of our biggest allies, and uh, you know, the African countries and things like that, they're not, unfortunately. And all this other stuff that I will not go into because like I said, I'm not a political scientist. I don't, never was, never will be, never wanna be. But I just wanna put food for thought when you start if you're a person who feels this way or there's people around you that feel this way, try to look at it in a deeper meaning because not everything comes off the way that you're interpreting it to come off as, if that makes any sense. I like really want to keep my personal beliefs and things like that off my channel. However, I did feel like since I did have this platform, even if it's only 200, actually not only because 200 people for me is a lot. I'm sorry, I'm not a subscriber thirsty person where I'm just like, oh, I only have 200 subscribers and everybody else is 20,000. Like, no, because that makes the people that you have feel, at least to me when I hear people say that, it makes me feel like, oh, well y'all not really important. Like, thanks, but you know, it's still not enough. You guys are definitely important. So I don't want to say like only as if you're a small amount. But though I am not able to reach as many people as others are able to, the fact that even 10 people watch this and hear what I'm saying is enough to me and it's important for me to get that message out there. So that's enough for the serious talk for the day. I mean, well, probably not, but that was just one thing that I wanted to bring out. So for my lid color, I'm gonna go in with my Chocolate Bar Semi Sweet Palette. And I'm going to be using caramel all over my lid area. Uh, what else to talk about? So I was watching a video, a Facebook video the other day, not Facebook, a YouTube video. And it was just all about, you know, how to start a YouTube channel. And it's a YouTuber that I've been watching for a while. I've been watching her since she's had like 9,000 subscribers. And now she's um, at 100,000, I think, maybe more than that. And she kind of blew up and I was like, oh, go ahead, girl. And she was talking about, you know, how to start a YouTube channel and about collabs and how, you know, if you have this amount of subscribers and somebody else has this amount of subscribers, it's really not fair for you to ask them to help you because they worked really, really hard to get where they are. And, you know, you you they can't really get anything out of, you know, helping you, but you're gonna be getting all the gain and that's not really fair. Now, one thing about me is I always try to understand where somebody who has an opposite, opposite um, opinion than I do, I always try to understand where they're coming from. So do not think that I don't get where she's coming from and I'm like, you know, trying to be this, you know, belligerent person, but I really don't like that mindset at all. Um, and she is definitely, and anyone who feels that way actually, is entitled to their own opinions. Um, and I, they will be respected by me. Um, but I don't really like that mindset because I feel like if everybody had the mindset that I'm only gonna do for myself and I'm not gonna help anybody else out, we would never, as a group of people, as a society, we would never get anywhere. You know, it's almost like, think about all the groups of oppressed people that have ever, that have ever been oppressed from Blacks, Japanese, Jews, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, press groups have been around forever. Women. Think of where we would be if people decided, well, you know what? I had to struggle, so I'm not about to sit here and make a better tomorrow for the people behind me because I had to struggle. I wasn't allowed to vote. I had to die for the color of my skin or for my religious views. So I'm not about to sit here and make a better tomorrow. For somebody else now that that's a, a really extreme view but when you really think about it it's not that different because the point is that you're helping somebody though you can't really get anything out of it you're helping them because you want them to succeed shoot I mean there's sometimes where people will ask me stuff about like YouTube um, specific, specifically like technology things and I just don't want to help them because I feel like they didn't even try to learn on their own like they just immediately see somebody has something and instead of doing research and investigation they just want a handout that I don't like and I'm not saying that any person that ever asked me to collab collab 
I'm gonna say yes. I don't care how many subscribers you do, you have. I'm just gonna say yes because I'm a good person. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm not saying I'm a bad person either. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that it shouldn't. If someone has really good content and you know they're filming, you know their quality is really good, their personality is really good, you think that you get along with them, blah blah blah, blah and they have like one subscriber and you have one million, I don't see why the fact that they have one subscriber would make you not want to collab with them. I feel like it's gotten, YouTube has gotten to this point where people are just like super, honestly for lack of a better word, selfish with subscribers. It's like, I have all the subscribers, I'm not sharing my subscribers, I don't want to help anybody else, blah blah blah, blah. it's all mine, 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 mine. Like I really feel like you guys who act like that sound like the freaking pelicans from Finding Nemo. Mike, 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 Mike. I feel like people feel feel like they own their subscribers and like they only can watch their videos and nobody else's. Like there is seven billion people on this planet. Eight hundred and twenty-two million plus people, last time I checked anyway, in the United States alone. Now, not everybody has a computer. And a lot of them are not old enough to use computers. But there's a lot of people. There's a room for everybody to get help. And just because someone was not is not able to have the tools you have or isn't able to be as successful as you, doesn't mean that they don't deserve help. And I don't understand why we've come to a point where in order to help somebody, you have to get something out of it. Um, that's just not me, I'm sorry. That is not me at all. If somebody was to contact me today or tomorrow and they had three subscribers and they had really good quality, I like their videos, I like they're somebody that I would watch, I like their personality, of course I would collab with you, I don't give a crap, you seem like a cool person, we could chill, we could FaceTime, we could text, why would I not want to collab with you? It just, I don't really understand that mindset where this is like us against them, like you get a lot of like the, oh the old YouTube, I've been around on YouTube since 2008, before, before you getting paid on YouTube was a thing, like it's like this big competition about woo woo I've been on YouTube longer than you I'm the realist like let's be real I've been on YouTube longer than most of those people I've been on YouTube for since 2005 when YouTube was founded before Google's before YouTube was brought by Google I was watching YouTube videos 2005 it was this really weird website that if you spelled wrong would come up with a pornography website and I was in the fifth grade and I would watch anime on there. Am I bragging? Like I've known about YouTube before all of you. Like it's not a big deal. Like I don't understand why it matters. And I'm sorry I'm going on like this like tangent but it just, it really just irks me that people get so like territorial. I get this is your income but me having a million subscribers isn't going to stop you from making money off YouTube. You know what I mean? Like my subscriber count don't affect your income. This is something that you could hold me to if I ever got big on YouTube to the point where I had millions of subscribers or you know a hundred thousand I don't care there is no way that I would just shun people out just because they had less subscribers than me. I don't if you hit me up and I vibe with you whatever else that I need to make sure I'm in, that's in check is in check I don't care what your subscriber count is I will help you and that's it. I just went in and sprayed some Fix Plus on my shadow brush so I can make the gold a little more vibrant. But you being a good person and having good quality content has nothing to do with your subscriber count. There are some people I know who have little subscribers. They just started out on YouTube or even even like followers on like Instagram and their content is bomb. Like there's this one guy, his, his YouTube name is J, like J-A-E period, and he makes uh, the Sims 3 LPs. Um, last time I checked, he hasn't really been making videos recently, I don't think, but then again, I've kind of been like living in Iraq. But he, he makes YouTube videos for the Sims, LP, the Sims, and he doesn't even have that many subscribers. I think he has like under 2,000, and his videos are amazing. I love watching them all the time. And he doesn't have a lot of subscribers. There's people I know, and I'm not going to say their names because they're famous, who have a lot of subscribers and I'm just like, I don't see why. I really don't. Well, I just really wish like people would just get over this whole us them mentality and like, I can't help you because your subscriber count is low and you're, I'm better than you, I'm superior than you, whatever, whatever. Like it's just, it's really annoying. That is just, 
you know, my take on it. But at the end of the day, I mean, this tangent has been long enough, I think, about that nonsense. But I just feel like people just really need to come to a point where they're not so, eh, you know what I mean? Just so, eh. Just let me know if you feel it. You know, the eh, they're just so eh. That's all I, like, like, you're not even worth the words when you act like that. You're just eh. Now that that tangent's over, I really don't have anything else to talk about that I can think of. So, so far, um, this is where I'm going to stop with my eyes. I'm going to move on to my face, and then I'm going to go back and continue with them once I'm done with that. I've been using the, if you would focus on me, that'd be cool. I've been using the Maybelline Fit Me uh, Matte Poreless Foundation in the color 330. I really like it. It does fit me really, really, really well. But I do notice that when I um, am in my studio lights with them, they, it looks really, really, really white and cloudy. Um, I don't know why. Uh, I guess that's like the whole flashback thing people talk about. I don't really know. And I'm just going to be using my Real Technique sponge, which is a little dirty at the top. I'll watch videos and see people like apologize to their subscribers for having like their beauty sponges messy. And I'm confused. I'm like, why am I apologizing to you for what I put on my face? Yes, my sponge is dirty. And if you would like to be the keeper of my brushes being clean, I will gladly, I will gladly, mm -hmm, I will gladly email you my address. You can come and personally clean my brushes when I don't have time to. I like to just go in and use this. It's like this little, I don't, it's like a smooth foundation, like a rounded smooth foundation brush. The name of it was called a blurring brush. But I like to go in with this brush and just go in and blend my foundation even more. I don't know if it's just a technique I use when I apply my foundation, but I do find that like sometimes it looks kind of funny. Um, and really like shiny and greasy and all of that. So I like to just go in and use this brush to kind of like smooth all my foundation into my skin. And to set my foundation, I like to use the Remo London Stay Matte Found, or not foundation, translucent powder brush. Just buck up onto my face. So I'm just gonna use this for my under eye and I'm just going to blend it out with the same brick sponge. These girls be making some really unnecessary faces when we do our makeup. Like, what are we gonna do? It's not even stretching out. Like, it'll stretch out my cheek, but I could also just not move my mouth. Like, I don't understand what what it's supposed to do for me. I don't really have a setting powder for my uh, concealer, but when I purchased, because I'm still a noob at makeup, I went to Sephora and I got myself the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Palette. Um, and this is a medium tan, true tan. I wanted the Kat Von D, but the guy was telling me that I would never use some of the shades in the Kat Von D and I'd be more likely to use this one, which kind of made me mad because they have this at, Sephora, at Ulta and I could have just gotten it months ago instead of fiending to go to Sephora to get this. So anyway, I got this palette and he told me that if I wanted to cook or bake my concealer, which I personally want to do because when I see girls do it, I really feel like it brightens up their face more and I feel like when I do my under eye, you don't really know the difference he told me that I could take this lightest shade and just pack it under my eye in bulk so I'm going to try that method and see if it works just pack it all under my eye really 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 heavy if this is not a loose powder it's a little more difficult for me to do this I'm not light skinned for an african-american person but I'm not dark skinned either so I feel like this is kind of more like orangey but in camera it, it looks like it's highlighting at least to me it does like looking looking at it right now it looks like it's doing the job highlighting but in person in the mirror like it doesn't at all it just looks like it's adding orange to my face and that's it and I don't orange is not really a highlight tone for my skin color we'll work with it it looks good on camera that's all that matters <laughs> So while that is not even really setting or cooking or anything, honestly it's really not doing jack, I'm not even gonna lie, I'm going to go ahead and finish my eyes. As per usual, I'm gonna go in with my e.l.f. liquid eyeliner. Okay, so now I'm going to attempt to hopefully not miserably put on some blush lashes. I'm gonna use my Ardell Double Up and these are in the number 203. Now these are pretty used um, and they honestly 
probably should be like thrown out but I have a pair of new ones but I want to save them for Thanksgiving and just in case I go on like a little date or two while I'm home so I'm going to just use these for the sake of this video so they look kind of funny sorry they're really old there's these lashes that I found in the Dollar General I started grabbing them when I wanted to try out wearing lashes I forgot they're like the Broadway like Broadway something like that that's the brand of the lashes from the Dollar Dollar General and I've been buying them I started buying them just to try out lashes I still really suck at them but I love those the band is so thin so it blends so well you don't have to have like crazy thick eyeliner for it to blend Okay, so I went off camera to finish my uh, lashes and I ended up doing a lot more than just my lashes off camera. Um, okay, so these lashes are like gray looking. I'm gonna say something that most people are gonna disagree with. I really don't mind the drag looking lashes. I really, really, really don't. Now, I would wear these lashes if my outfit is gonna be like, bam, like whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't really know what outfit I'm wearing right now. Family isn't that type of family where I need to you know, dress really conservative, light makeup and stuff like that. I can literally go downstairs with bright lip pinks, bright lip pinks, woo, that's a new one. Bright pink lips, blue glitter eyelashes, eyeshadow, whatever. And my mom would make fun of me. Oh, she would make fun of me to no end. But I could do that. So, it, I, I really don't have that kind of family where I'm like, I have to be really conservative. So, so now I'm just going to attempt, attempt to contour. So I'm going to go in with that duo stick that I got from Sephora. And I'm going to use the contouring side. And this is in the shade deep, if anyone's curious. Contour shade first. And then go in with the darker one after. For my blush, a quad blush palette by e.l.f. And I'm going to go in with this, no, I'm going to go in with this darker burgundy color. Actually, I'm going to mix the bottom two colors. See what I get with that. A broken brush apparently is what I get. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to go in with the Anastasia palette once more. And I'm going to take that shimmer shade, the highlight shade in the palette, and just on a little bit of highlight. Oh, look at me glow. So for my lip comb, I'm gonna start up with this Milani Lip Liner in Spice. And I'm just gonna line my lips and then fill them in. I'm gonna go on with the NYX Soft Matte Lip Cream in London. Oh, there it is. Then I'm gonna go in with this Rimmel London Show Off Matte Lip Cream. And just put it in the center as well. And to top it all off, I'm gonna take this Milani Lip Gloss in, what color is this? Bear Secret. Now you have it, that is my complete look that I decided to do for Thanksgiving. I really like it, I'm really happy with it. I mean, I don't know y'all, I feel like my skills are improving. Yeah, you guys do feel like that. I feel like they're improving a lot. So this concludes my Thanksgiving makeup tutorial. Even though it's really, really, really long, I just really wanted to do a chit chat video and just kind of talk to you guys. Something that I really don't feel like I get to do often, which I personally like doing and you can definitely talk back to me in the comments. I'd love to actually like have like a real conversation with you guys. But yeah, that is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to thumbs it up. If you guys really enjoyed it, you should definitely subscribe if you're not already located beneath this video or in the little fun circle I have in the outro. That is pretty much all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. And if you don't celebrate Thanksgiving, you should still 
eat a ton of food. Just do it. If you're not American, if you don't celebrate it, it's just why not just eat a lot? It's the best thing ever. That's all I have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. I wish you all the peace, love, and happiness. Bye! But you know that there is no innocent one in this game for two. I go, I go, and then you go, you go out and spill the truth. This bag from Marshall. It's a pretty decent sized bag. It's kind of 